The Life of Fibonacci by Joseph Diagnis, illustrated by John O'Brien. You can call me Blockhead. Everyone else does. One day, when I was a boy, Maestro wrote out a worth a math problem and gave us ten minutes to solve it. I solve it in two seconds. That's the way I am with numbers. I have loved them since I was very little. Everywhere I looked, in my parents' home, there was something to count. That day in class, the other students did their math on abacuses and wrote out their no answers in Roman numerals. It was time consuming, but that's how we did our math back then. As I waited for them to finish, I got bored. I counted 12 birds in a tree outside. How many legs did all those birds have? I wondered how many eyes, how many wings, and if each bird sang for two seconds, one bird after the other, how long would it all take all of them to sing? These were such beautiful questions that I started daydreaming. Leonardo, cried Maestro, how dare you daydream in my class? But, sir, I said, I was thinking. Aha! Maestro cried. There's the trouble. There will be no thinking in this classroom, only working. You're nothing but an absent minded, lazy dreamer. You! You blockhead! The other kids laughed. Blockhead! Blockhead! they cried. I was so sad that I ran out of school and into the streets of Pisa. I let the, I let the noise of the city swallow me up. What a wonderful city it was. The year was 1178. And Pisa was one of the greatest city in all of Italy. In the churchyard, Workers were building a new bell tower. Something had gone seriously wrong with the builder's math. All around me, I saw and heard the glory of numbers. So many people were using math in their work. My head was swimming. I was so excited that I didn't watch where I was going. Stop dreaming, a lady cried. What are you, a blockhead? That night, my father was angry. The whole city is talking, he yelled. Everyone says my son is an idiot. They call you blockhead. I can't have that. Perhaps... You are being too hard on the boys, Senor Bonaccio, said my father's advisor, Alfredo. Silence, cried father. Leonardo, soon you will live with me for Africa. That will put an end to these nicknames. I'll make a merchant out of you yet. Yuck. I thought, who wants to be a merchant? The night before we sailed, I couldn't sleep. I watched sadly as a shooting star fell into the ocean. In the starlight, I saw an old friend. He waited for me to dry my tears. I think people are happiest when they know what pleases them said Alfredo. Me? I love cheese. And you, Master Leonardo? What makes you happiest? Numbers, I said without thinking. 
then you should learn all you can about them. That way you will always be happy. I decided to take Alfredo's advice. My father took me live in a city called Bugia in northern Africa. In my new home, I noticed that Arab merchants didn't use Roman numerals. They used numerals that had borrowed from Hindu people of India. Back home he wrote this, Acts 5, 1, 1, 1. Here, the merchants wrote this, 18. See how much easier it is? I wanted so much to learn these numerals. By day I did my father's accounts. By day, I did my father's account. Counts. At night, Alfredo went with me as I learned the strange new num numerals. Numerals. When I got older, my father sometimes sent me on business trips. When I was working, I sought out wise men in every city. In Egypt, I learned how the ancient pharaohs and their subjects had used fraction. I measured my way through Istanbul, Turkey, and Damascus, Syria. In Greece, I learned about geometry from ancient books of math. In Sicily, I put my division and subtraction skills to good use. In France, well, in France, I ate fish soup. <laughs> One day, I began to write about Hindu-Arabic numerals. I tossed some riddles into it, like this one. There was a man who put two baby rabbits in a field. It takes rabbits one month to grow up and be ready to have babies. And it takes them one month to give birth to a pair of baby rabbits. Every month, a pair of grown-up rabbits gives birth to a pair of baby rabbits. rabbits. How many pair of rabbits will the man have at the end of a year? Alfredo tried to solve it, but he couldn't. Then I showed him I showed him how to solve the problem. On the very first day you'd have a pair of baby rabbits. At the end of month one you would have a pair of all grown up and ready to have babies. End of month two, one grown up pair, one baby pair. And month three, two grown up pairs. One baby pair. End of month four. Three grown up pairs, two baby pairs. End of month five. Five grown up pairs, three baby pairs. Then I noticed that you don't have, don't even have to write out the whole problem. If you add any two consecutive numbers in the pattern, you'd get the num the next numbers. One pair plus one pair equals two pairs. One pair plus two pairs equals three pairs. Two pairs plus three pairs equals five pairs. Here are the first few numbers of the pattern. One, one, two, three, five, eight, thirteen, twenty-one, thirty-four, fifty-five, eighty-nine, one hundred forty-four, 233, 377, if you don't watch out, you'll have 233 pairs of rabbit in a year, or 377 if you started with a grown-up pair. News of my work reached Frederick II, ruler of the Holy Roman Empire. When I visited his play, palace, his wise men challenged me with a bunch of re really hard math problems, but I solved them in no time. This Leonardo is one smart cookie, said Frederick. Everyone laughed. After all, he was the emperor. I felt proud of my accomplishments, but one day, when I was back in Pisa, I overheard some people talking in the marketplace. 
That son of the bon- Bonaccio, said a man, he's w- the one who says we should use those numerals from India. What's wrong with the old numerals? asked another. If they were good enough for the Romans, they're good enough for me. What a blockhead! Suddenly I was sad again. What good is all my work if people don't listen? I thought. People will always remember me as a blockhead. I wonder what my old friend Alfredo would have said. Suddenly it was as if he were there with me. Don't listen to these fools, Leonardo, roared Alfredo. Aren't these numbers, are yours, very important? Aren't these numbers of yours very important? I certainly think so, I said. Someday, Hindu Arabic numerals will be known all over the world. Why? The more I study them, the more I amazed, the more amazed I am by them. With that, I pointed to a flower on the beach. How many petals does this flower have? Alfredo counted and answered, 21. And this flower? flower? 13, he replied. So what? But I did not reply quickly. Instead, we walked along the beach all night counting things. We counted three petal flowers, five petal flowers, and eight petal flowers. We counted to five on the arms on the arms of starfish and inside an apple. See, Alfredo, I said, in everything that I count, everywhere I that I look, I keep finding the same numbers. Do I recognize them? Alfredo recited them aloud. One, one, two, two, five, eight, thirteen, 21, 34, 5, 55, my goodness, he cried. There, they are the numbers from your rabbit problem. Exactly, I said. And we're just getting started. Lately, I have been thinking about those numbers in a different way. Watch. In the sand, I drew one tiny square and one more tiny square next to it. Next came a shape two squares high and two squares wide, then a three by three square shape, then five by five square shape, and eight by eight square shape, and thirteen by thirteen square shape. I could go on and on, I said, but it just wouldn't look right unless I connected them. Like this. Can you guess what I drew inside them? Alfredo sure couldn't. A spiral, I shouted. You can make a spiral with my numbers. How magnificent, said Alfredo. Yes, it is, I said, but I still don't understand why these numbers are so special. Don't you see, Leonardo, said Alfredo. These are the numbers Mother Nature uses to order the universe. She has hidden them in many places, and until now, no one has found her secret. Alfredo's words filled my heart with joy. All my life, people had called me a blockhead because I daydreamed about numbers. But how could that be bad? Mother Nature loved numbers too. Alfredo was uh, delighted. From the tiniest plant to the prettiest pine cone, from the tallest flower of the wettest wave to the most wondrous far-off galaxy, all these are home to your numbers, Leonardo. I am old now, but numbers still make me happy. In all my years, I have never told anyone the secret I shared with Alfredo that night. But I've now, but I know, but now, I've told you. Look through this book again, and now, and you will find num- my numbers, just as they are in real life. Now you see why I don't mind being called blockhead after all. <laughs>